Hello and welcome to the first episode of my new screencast on One Bit Music. Yeah, that's right, I'm talking about One Bit Music, as opposed to Eight Bit Music, which some of you might already be familiar with. The main difference between the two is that Eight Bit Music uses a sound chip with multiple voices, whereas One Bit Music uses a simple digital to analog converter that you can only switch on or off. So, to put it short, I am going to review some old and new software tools that allow you to make polyphonic music on monophonic sound devices. For the most part, I'll be talking about tools for the Sinclair Static Spectrum home computer, as this is the platform where this kind of music is most commonly used, though eventually I'll also cover some other devices such as the PC speaker. This episode, however, is dedicated to the famous Wham! The Music Box routine for ZX Spectrum 48K. When the ZX Spectrum came out in 1982, users were a bit disappointed that Uncle Clive, uh, I mean uh, Sir Clive Sinclair, had forgotten to build in a sound chip. However, it didn't take long before some very clever programmers discovered that it was possible to squeeze more than one voice out of the built-in monophonic beeper. One of the first was Mark Alexander, who started developing games for the ZX Spectrum around 1983. In 1984, he discovered a trick that allowed him to create the illusion of two tones playing simultaneously on the beeper. The first game that used this magical routine was Fairlight, which was released in 1985. It's the music that's running in the background right now. Soon after that, Mark decided to create an editor, allowing non-programmers to create two-channel music on the spectrum as well. It was released by Melbourne House under the name of Wham! The Music Box, making it the very first multi-channel editor available on the spec. The name Wham! comes from the now uh, not so well-remembered British teeny pop group by the same name. The routine is also simply called The Music Box by many people, however I'll stick with Wham to avoid confusion with the AY chip music editor called The Music Box, which was also made by Mark Alexander. The editor itself was an almost revolutionary piece of software at the time, and reviewers and users were totally psyched about it. Subsequently the routine, whose core by the way is only 32 bytes long, was used in many releases. Mark himself used it in a number of games such as Gyroscope, Thunderbirds or the specky version of Winter Games. Anyway, let's finally have a look at the editor. Just pop the tape in, type load, double quote, double quote and off we go. After a couple of minutes of screechy data noise, the application has loaded and we are greeted with the main menu and a demo tune, which is of course a cover of a song by Wham! The Pop Group. If you want to familiarize yourself with the built-in controls, hit 7 to display the help page. As you can see, there aren't many keys to remember, because this program is actually very simple to use. Key 6 brings you back to the main menu, hit 6 again and you enter the actual editor. Now, this editor uses a score based approach, so editing the music is very similar to composing sheet music. The main difference being that you can actually hear what you're doing while you're composing. The lower half of the keyboard acts as a piano and is used to enter the notes. There are of course two tone channels, you can switch between them at any time by pressing T. You can move forward and backward in the track by pressing P and 0 respectively. Note that when you press P, Wham! will play all the notes present in the step you are currently editing. Anyway, simply enter some tones and then press Q to hear what you have done. Oh no, that doesn't quite sound like Beethoven yet, but it'll have to do for this little demonstration. You may notice that I've only used quavers here, due to the limitations of the engine that's in fact the only note length you can use. 
So if you want a longer tone, you simply put two or more notes of the same pitch in a row. Well now, Wham not only allows you to play tones, it also features a powerful kick drum, as well as some customizable noise effects. However, these use both channels, so you cannot have a tone and a drum effect playing at the same time. The effects will override notes in the score, so I strongly recommend entering those after you finish the melody. In fact, noise effects don't even show up in the score, which is kind of confusing. However, there's a reason for that, which I'll come to in a sec. First, let's enter some kicks by pressing E at the desired locations, as well as some noise effects, which are located on the keys Y, I and U. Now the song sounds like this. I've already mentioned noise effects are customizable. You can edit them on a separate screen which you can access by pressing 8. Let's screw around a bit with these settings here and now our noise effects sound a bit different. Now, the reason why the noise effects don't show up in the score is because you can have more than just three different noise effects in one song. If you enter some effects and then change the effect settings, only those effects which you enter afterwards will be affected by the change. This is rarely used, however. When you've done with your tune, hit 6 to go back to the main menu. Here you can either save your track in WAM's own format, or use the WAM compiler to compile the song into a block of machine code which you can then use with your own programs. The concept of WAM may have been the latest state of the art in the 80s, but nowadays computer musicians usually aren't too impressed by this type of score or sheet music editor. There are, however, a few other possibilities to use the WAM routine. This, for example, is the Music Box Tracker Edition, which was made by Russian coder Shiru in 2009. The sound routine is the same as in WAM. However, the editor has been completely rewritten and now uses a vertical tracker type interface, which most contemporary chip music composers will already be familiar with. The WAM routine is also featured in Chris Cowley's Bipolar, which combines several specky beeper engines into one easy to use Windows application. Unfortunately, the famous WAM kick drum and the noise effects are not included in this version, so if you use it, you'll be missing out the fun. Lastly, there's one more editor based loosely on the WAM code called 48K Sound System, which was a type-in published in the Your Sinclair magazine by Jim Newell. However, it's a very obscure piece of software and not a very user-friendly one. I have never heard of anybody actually using it. And with that, we've already reached the end of this episode. Hope you enjoy it and tune in next time for more ZX Spectrum Beeper action.